All right, welcome and welcome back. I've got another simple video for you guys today. This one about forced burnout. Now, I think most people look at burnout and assume that it is something caused by overwork, right? Doing too much in too extended of a period of time and it ends up putting you in the standpoint where you just you you no longer have the drive you do not want to continue working down that path and trying to improve your art let alone even think about things you'd want to draw or how to even improve on things at the end of the day that is a type of burnout that is standard out there and it's something that most people should be uh, taking into account and making sure that you're not doing those things you're not overworking yourself you're not uh, continuing on for too long without giving yourself a break make sure to have moderation in what you're doing right but the type of burnout i wanted to talk about today is more of an emotional system type of burnout at least that's the way that i i'd want to put it this type of burnout is caused by a lot of mental pressure a lot of different situations that can cause you to feel like you've put yourself into a mental space that just isn't conducive with you being able to do art at the time it causes a lot of overthought a lot of issues that that make it really really hard for you to just do the work because you're so surrounded and thinking about everything surrounding that work so let's get into the kind of progression in how that works, why it happens, and we'll go from there. So one of the most common places that I see this forced burnout start to happen is a situation of opportunity. And one of those most common, most well-known situations of opportunity is art blocks. So this could be an art block based on total systematic art block which is what i would say is an art block where you just can't draw anything you have no ideas in the noggin you don't have the drive to make random studies you don't have the interest in just leisure doodles anything like that you have no ability to get anything going in terms of having any drive for art but there could also be segmented art blocks so that could be you don't have any specific ideas for yourself on what you want to draw therefore you know you can still do things like practice uh, posing perhaps you could still practice a lot of color work you could practice you know literally anything else and be fine but when it comes to full piece ideas nothing's really hitting the the dartboard on that one now the, even that can be something that causes this forced burnout to to kind of progress the reason is anytime you have an art block or a situation that is kind of opportunistic in that way, anything that kind of comes into your view when you're trying to work in art, that builds pressure. And I think pressure is one of those core things that can stop you from either just working in, in a way that's relaxed and calm. It could be something that makes you stop autopiloting in a lot of things autopiloting is is typically something you don't want but in art i think there are certain things you want to be able to autopilot that could be things like sketching or you know just just planning out parts of your work but pressure is kind of like automatic breathing when you get put out of the space where you're just doing things without putting thought into it especially in those really really early areas of art that makes this pressure just continue to build throughout the entire rest of your piece so pressure is something to be avoided a lot of times i think this you know anyone who has done any art before or continues to try to improve understands those periods where you feel a lot of internal pressure this is definitely kind of the spark for a lot of that chain of events to continue on and if you let it continue on, it is something that will, at least for that period of time, however long you're struggling with it, it will swallow you up. It, it is something that is very difficult to get through and to get over and just get back to that state where you can just draw without uh, necessarily focusing on all the things that you aren't able to do and just focus on doing the things that you can. It's very, very hard to get back to that uh, point zero. So from pressure, 
you suddenly oftentimes see people start to over expect results from themselves. I think a lot of times this is because now that they're more aware of the things that they're trying to do, the things that they cannot do in art, they end up looking at every step of their process. They try to overachieve in every single one of those things to calm that pressure from the art blocks. And that starts to create scenarios for yourself where you can never perform to par. You can never hit the standards that you want to hit because you're immediately creating a space for yourself that isn't your normal. It's not what you're able to do. It's not you just doing the thing. It is now this scape of huge pressure. It's this entire landscape that you've built for yourself where you're expecting things that aren't what you even do. It's you trying to prove to yourself that you can calm this pressure by you know achieving something great. And that is a humongous recipe for failure. You have to avoid things like this because as soon as you set those expectations, as soon as you really start to try to answer the, the beck and call of this giant pressure situation, all of these things that are racking up on top of each other that makes it feel like you need to be better in that moment, that is when you're setting yourself up to just crumble. You can never make these giant leaps, these giant changes, these giant calming answers to all the questions that you're building up in your head. You, people don't improve that way, you know what I mean? So all of this pressure, all of these over expectations start building into frustration and all these feelings that you cannot improve, that you cannot do as well as you think you can or that you should be able to. And this is the tipping point. This is where people, you know, start from point A with the art blocks or anything that comes up in your work and it just starts to slowly build and you have these natural responses to things that try to prove that it's nothing. And because you've tried to fight that, that's how you end up at this point where you're so frustrated, you're so just stuck in this pressure loop of feeling like you can't do anything. Why? Because you've set these expectations that are no longer normal for you. They're, they're no longer realistic. And the fact that you're even looking at all of this in the first place, when you used to just, you know, draw for the sake of drawing and perhaps didn't really necessarily think throughout all these steps, that landscape for drawing is incredibly unhealthy. And that is why it leads to so many people hitting these forced burnout situations that I've been seeing more and more recently with the rise of like AI, uh, just seeing so much great talent out there and, and so many people that are putting so, so, so much time into art, which is great to see, but I think people compare too much and then start over expecting things that they shouldn't. So now we've kind of gotten the scenario out of the way. The responses are pretty obvious and pretty simple, right? But I think actually leveraging those things is the difficult part. So the automatic obvious first result to, to kind of quell this is to take some time out. Nobody wants to do it, but everyone should, whether you're feeling this forced burnout or not. I know that for myself, every time that I'm going on a vacation, any time that I'm basically putting myself in a position where I'm forced to stop for an extended period of time, a week to me is an extended period of time, so that should already tell you something. But anytime that I'm in this position, I feel like I'm going to somehow let myself down when I come back to it. I'm going to somehow not be able to perform to my standards, let alone my standards. I feel like I'm going to forget things when I come back. And a lot of times that idea that I could be taking time off and taking several steps back is what already builds pressure before I've even done anything, right? Because now, A, I'm not able to enjoy the vacation, most likely because I'm worrying and thinking about all of this for when I come back, but B, that pressure situation is already starting the chain reaction. I don't even have an art block. I don't have any challenges in terms of actually doing the art, but when I come back, I've already set the stage. You know what I mean? I've already just got the wheel turning without even realizing it. And that is something that is not great. You should allow yourself that time out. The mental breaks, when you actually take them and you come back to it, 
as long as you haven't really built that pressure up, I think you'll realize that those breaks, those timeouts for your mental health, whether you're going on a vacation or you just really need to, to take a step back for a little bit of a time, that for me has felt so good every single time that I actually come back from it. I've gotten better about it over the years too. I think the the first vacation or two where I've, I've actually put myself in a position like that were the worst. I, I always, you know, set the stage for, for all of those over expectations and everything. But nowadays, I kind of know that like, hey, I put in so much time every single week, every month, every, you know, every year. Me taking a week off just to reset is something that can do so much to make you better than where you were before that it's not even funny. It, it is such a nice thing to be able to be refreshed and excited about drawing and you know you want to get back to it and try all these things out maybe you saw some pieces on on twitter or wherever you look at art and now you have that fire burning right you you want to get back to it you got all this stuff you want to do that by itself is the exact opposite of what starts a force burnout that bam right there you you have the ball rolling and you're ready to go all you have to do is be excited and, and and have fun and get back to it and really none of this ever happens but it's when you start to go the opposite direction that everything starts to go bad so give yourself that time if you really feel like you're in this position where you just are over expecting you really don't feel like you're hitting your mark and you're always worrying and overthinking how you're performing in art that's a terrible standard a terrible stage for you to be just trying to exist and trying to make things because you already got your own eyes over your shoulder. It, that's the worst thing you can do. So give yourself that mental time, recharge, come back excited, get that ball rolling again. The second thing I think is the hardest for many artists that are either A, just starting out in a serious fashion, or B, have been at it for a while and are noticing some good improvements over time right and this is ego i think this is something that a lot of artists they, they bump into at some point i know i have back in the day and this is something i think i've already quelled at least in my own career but it is something that is a crossroads for just about everyone i think ego is a huge pressure builder a huge expectation builder because you now either have this newfound belief in what you can do, this newfound stage of expectations and, and pars to hit when art is kind of like a wave. You know, it, it pulls forward and then you hit low tide. Sometimes you do well. Sometimes you really, really just, it hits the fan. You know what I mean? It, it does not go to plan at all. And I think you have to really be laid back and ready to work with that ebb and flow because you're not always going to be at the top of your game but it's important to understand that nobody expects you to be but when you have that ego you really build that mindset that you have to be hitting this constant par or even outperforming that par on a constant basis and that is the exact same setup to start that force burnout and this is something that i don't really think I can give a clear guide on how to break that ego, but I think it's something that everyone should be kind of mindful about, you know? Everyone's just trying to do their best. Everyone is just trying to have fun, I think, with art as well. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. But you have to just do the thing, understand that people that are out there that are also in the space or drawing at a stage that, are, that is better than you, perhaps, uh, maybe it's a lot better than you. Maybe it's a little bit. Who knows? But either way, they're not there to hurt you. They're not trying to attack your work just because they exist and maybe they've been at it for a longer time. They're not people to be afraid of. I've seen this happen a lot with ego. People start to take other people existing in the same space as a front where they, they fear them or they feel threatened by them. But I've found that just being inspired, being excited, and having people around that keep on driving you to continue to improve because they've already set an example that the time put in and the work put in gives you something out of it, right? Let people inspire you. 
let yourself be vulnerable to the fact that you don't know things in art. You know what I mean? Let it be a growth journey and a journey for you to find your style, to find your path, to find the things you want to be in art, as opposed to putting that expectation and ego stage onto yourself that you have to be the perfect you already. It doesn't have to be that way. But that is about it for today. Just wanted to give you guys a couple of my thoughts on the forced burnout perspective and how to kind of recognize these things and how to avoid them. So stay calm, keep doodling. I think most importantly, have fun. I'm going to stop rambling for now. I'm going to stop talking your ears off. It's been fun as always. It's a pleasure. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care. Yes, I need to get